The following is an Outdoor Channel original production. Former NASCAR crew chief champion Jeff Hammond stalks high into the Wyoming mountains after his first bull with a boat. Now on Real Trees NASCAR Outdoors. NASCAR Outdoors, presented by Chevy Silverado, the official truck of the outdoors. Hello everybody, I'm Bill Jordan. For the ones who know me, you know that I live for the outdoors. But what you may not know, that I'm a big fan of the sport of NASCAR. The fans, the pits, the cars. It's intense, lightning fast pace in every sense of the word. Here on Realtree's NASCAR Outdoors, I have the chance to take these drivers and personalities out here in my world. And let me tell you, you'll see a whole different side from the one at the track. This week, legendary crew chief turned NASCAR sports commentator, Jeff Hammond has returned to Wyoming's Wagon Hound Ranch for his third attempt at a successful archery elk hunt. Situated in the heart of the Laramie Mountain Range, Wagon Hound features more than 200,000 acres of prime elk habitat. But hunting a big bull elk with a bow takes skill, drive, and desire to a whole nother level. Well, it's my third year coming back to Wagon Hound Ranch and having an opportunity to go elk hunting with a bow. That's right, I'm trying to get my first bull here at Wagon Hound with a bow. We've been trying, Dax McCarty and I, we've, we've given it the old college try the last couple years, but this could wind up being the year we kind of turn everything around. I'm, I'm really excited about it. They're always, you know, they've got a lot of great elk here at Wagon Hound, and Dax and everybody here does a great job of knowing where they are, when they're in the rut, and I feel like this, this week could be the week that we're able to put this thing finally together, but it's time to close out the deal. You ready, partner? I guess we can go. <laughs> I thought this was my hunt. It is. It okay, is. well then we can go. <laughs> this year's, you know, really you can't ask for, for better conditions as far as uh, habitat goes for for elk and, and deer, antelope, cattle. I mean, it's just a, we had a really wet spring coming off one of the most severe drought years we've had in a long time. The feed around is just unbelievable for this time of year. You know, and those elk are scattered out and uh, they're just happy. It's, it's a, you know, it's just a great thing to see coming off what we had last year. Well, it didn't take very long once we got here to Wagon Hound for things to get going. Day one, we get out of the truck, we start hearing some bugling. We headed, headed out that morning in the direction that the, we'd heard the elk and where they'd moved off in a big group and we figured there, you know, good chance we're gonna run into something. And we heard some bugling, we kind of worked down this draw. The wind was somewhat in our favor, at least at, at the point we started down in the draw. We get down and we get set up, and we see this bull, and I'm gonna call him Freak Nasty. He had some really strange antlers on it, and we were kind of debating whether to do it or to not, but he looked like a bull that needed to be taken out of the herd. He had this a really strange looking right side. It was kind of twisted, and it had, I guess you might say, had character. And I really was interested in maybe taking a shot at this bull with character. End up being a pretty unique bull, probably a management bull, you know, those bulls. Seems like they just never really, you know, get grow into anything uh, big, but just something that you know you don't see all the time. Uh, that bull came pretty close. Just had some trees in front of him, and, and Jeff never got a, a shot at him. What'd you quit what? for? What'd you quit for? What? What'd you quit for? Because he had milk on his lips. Shoot, that sucker was so ugly, he's pretty. <laughs> you see him, really? I just saw a little bit of it. Had real long fronts. He had a lot of trash on the uh, left side. Yeah. And he, he was real wide and uh, fairly heavy. 
but the, uh, I mean, the right side, the way it came out, it didn't go back. It just kind of, it kind of came out and did like this. Up. Oh, yeah. He never presented himself right there from where we were located, unfortunately. But uh, it really is a great way to start the morning off. Jeff's archery elk hunt is off to an exciting start here in Wyoming. But will this finally be the year to bring home a victory? Next on Real Trees NASCAR Outdoors. Realtree's NASCAR Outdoors is brought to you by the all-new Chevy Silverado, 2014 North American Truck of the Year. Primo's Hunting, speak the language. New Holland, the official tractor of Team Realtree. Bass Pro Shops, your adventure starts here. Carhartt, trusted from work to woods. Wiley X Eyewear, absolute premium protection in the field. And by Bill Jordan's Realtree, family, friends, and the outdoors. Former NASCAR crew chief, Jeff Hammond continues his spot and stalk archer elk hunt from Wyoming's Wagon Hound Ranch. This is Jeff's third year hunting with a bow after that mature bull elk. As you bow hunters know, it can push you to the limits. And with the rut in full swing, Jeff and his guide Dag start a new day with new drive and determination. Well, when the second morning showed up, all of a sudden I was reminded once again what makes bow hunting elk such a challenge. All the hiking, uphill, the downhill, to chasing the bugles that are on, always on the other side of the ridge, and the challenges of just kind of getting yourself reacclimated to this high elevation that I'm not used to. Let's go up. Feels like going up, man. Why not? We started searching again, and up those hills and down those hills to try to find that one opportunity that maybe kind of help us close this deal out. I always like the penthouse view. So be it, we're scouting from the top of the ridge once again. We never do anything in the bottom. We do always go to the top and look down. We spy a bull that's gotta be maybe three quarters of a mile away on another ridge. You know, I'd cow called a couple times when we first saw him from probably a mile away. He answered, we thought, well, he's, you know, kind of interested, so let's head that direction. As it always happens here at Wagon Hound, especially with Dax McCarty, off we go. The chase is on. We beat feet down this ridge, down across the meadow, and believe it or not, I want to say thank you to the Beaver family because they built us a nice bridge that we had to cross over this really wide creek, pretty deep creek, to get to the other side, to even get to this bull. You're talking about challenges, folks. We've had it all here so far our early part of the week here hunting at Wagon Hound, but it's always good. It always makes you feel like you've accomplished something. We got our way up into the timber, and again, you know, like we do is, is a lot of times got got in position as close as we thought we could. And I dropped back, started cow calling. And when he started calling, the bull started coming. My heart race kind of started going up, and I mean, business was really looking great. I mean, he started coming off this hill came right to the call. I mean, came right on down. I mean, everything was just almost textbook. He came in there like on a string and he stops on a dime. I've got a full draw on him, but all I can see is his head. 
not really, for me, the best of shots, but I had no vitals. So the next thing you know, he looks over at us. He said, this don't look good. It's time for me to leave this party. And he spun around and back up the hill he went. This is another one of those encounters. I think it makes you a little bit smarter and a little bit more prepared for when it does happen. Well, hopefully it will happen. No shot. No, never shot. Didn't have one. Didn't have a shot. Where we were standing, <clears throat> right here, that pine tree. He came down. He came in behind the next two pine trees. As he was coming through there, I drew, and he stopped. At 18 yards, we almost closed the deal out. Over the last couple of years, Jeff Hammond has not found the right combination to get that trophy elk with a bow. But hunting the Wagon Hound Ranch, anything can happen, especially during the rut. I've been around elk hunting for a while, and I've had a lot of opportunities to see a lot of elk do a lot of strange things. But in the afternoon hunt here at Wagon Hound, I got a chance to experience something like none other. Even my guy, Dax McCarty, he was blown away when all of a sudden, late in the evening, we heard a lot of bugling out toward the road. We had a long, long way to go uh, to get to where they were, but it was, you know, the direction, the direction we, we kind of wanted with the way the wind was blowing, and we just started heading towards those elk. Um, and it just seemed like more and more elk were joining this group, and you know, it's something I, I kind of like to call an elk frenzy, where you know you don't see it all the time, but they just kind of conglomerate into a, one area. It sounded like all of a sudden we were having ourselves not only an elk convention, but a showdown between big bulls, and I'm talking about monster bulls, 380 and above, chasing each other all over the place, all trying to kind of like cut this guy's herd and get his cows away from him. It was unbelievable. Stop when I stop. It was fun and awesome to watch. You almost hated to get in there and to try to break up the party, but it was a great opportunity for us to maybe get an outstanding bull. I mean, what was getting my, blowing me away was this big bull was running away bulls that, like, man, just stop for a second, I'll shoot you. I mean, there were five by fives that were monsters. There was, you know, some nice six by sixes. I'm talking about if this one bull, like I said, he was 380 plus. He was running 360 class and 350 class bulls all over the place because he didn't want them to cut into his harem. He really was protecting those cows. He wasn't about to let anybody have any one of them. And he just kept moving them and kept moving them. We just kept going and, and uh, told Jeff just to follow behind and you know, stay as close as he could. And, and we ended up getting really close to this herd of elk and you know, saw some really nice bulls. One, one bull in particular was an exceptional bull. We get within 75 yards of them, but they kept moving, kept moving, kept moving. And guess what else was moving? The sun. It was going down and down and down and getting darker and darker. We were running out of shooting light and we just couldn't quite close that gap to get that desired shot. But I've never seen that many bulls being run around. You hear about it all the time, but right in the middle of it. We were playing basically tail end Charlie, trying to get, part, get in the party, you might say, but we couldn't quite get there. But it was incredible. I'm telling you right now, I had goosebumps. I was out of breath. Everything was going crazy, but we were running on adrenaline, running up here and all of a sudden, we just ran out of time. He was huge. That was important. We had bulls at like 80, 80 yards, but I'm gonna tell you right now, there's two monster bulls in there. <laughs> One monster, monster. Oh, and then there were several. And there's all we haven't even thought about. 
I liked that little five by, I mean, I say little five by five. I thought that five by five had a lot of character. Yeah. And good size. Oh, that was fun. Yeah, when they get like that, you just kind of hold up, get in the middle yeah. of them, and hope. We just kind of ran out of cover. We were 30 minutes late. If we had been there just, I mean, maybe 10 minutes sooner, we did all we could. We were clean on the other side of, of a meadow and two ridges, but we heard what was going on and we beat feet over. I've never moved so fast, so far, in such a short period of time to try to get ourselves in position to get an opportunity at a bull, but it just wasn't meant to be. And unfortunately, that's the one thing about bow hunting you can't control. With a rifle, it would have been a chip shot, but with a bow, it was just not gonna happen. I have news for you. What? It's as hard as I can kick it today. Realtree's NASCAR Outdoors is brought to you by the all-new Chevy Silverado, 2014 North American Truck of the Year. Primo's Hunting, speak the language. New Holland, the official tractor of Team Realtree. Bass Pro Shops, your adventure starts here. Carhartt, trusted from work to woods. Wiley X Eyewear, absolute premium protection in the field. And by Bill Jordan's Realtree, family, friends, and the outdoors. Here at Wyoming's Wagon Hound Ranch, former NASCAR crew chief Jeff Hammond and his guide Dax have hunted long and hard for the opportunity and mature bull with a bow. It's down to the wire, and once again, the odds are stacked against them. Shot at him if we can get over there fast. The forecast, uh, you know, was calling for high winds, and so, you know, it was, it was Jeff's last day, so we were really gonna, you know, try to get things done in the morning and hope that we get things done in the morning. And so we decided to go to an area we hadn't hunted yet. Uh, and it's it's a little more timbered, a little more protected area. And, and my thought was that if the wind was gonna start blowing that, you know, at least we'd be in, a, in an area, maybe the, the wind was over our heads and, and not quite as bad in the timber. And, and maybe those elk would wanna move to the timber. Oh, this hustle. You always want to straight over there. You always, to, you always want to hustle. You like to hustle. Hustle. I'll try to see if we can get an eye on him where they went. Just stay down with them. Okay. So off we went to Mill Creek, and I'm glad we did. And the reason is, as we got there, there was no wind. When you're archery hunting for elk, you just have to have everything in your favor. And this happened to be one of those mornings, and uh, you know we just kind of were skirting along the the base of the timber and, and could hear the elk out in the flats starting to bugle and starting to move. And uh, we just kind of stayed downwind of them and tried to get into the, into the timber before they did. Shortly after that, we got right in the middle of, of a bevy of bulls. I mean, they were all calling to one another and we really felt like we had an opportunity if we could get set up to possibly finally close a deal out here at Wagon Hill. I want you guys to go up here, just get to where you can see, get kind of an open spot. I'm gonna drop back here and call. Hopefully they come down one of these fingers. Dax said, look, you need to go down this draw, up across this ridge, and start working your way toward this bull. We could hear him on the other side. It was so thick in there, but we couldn't see him. So he said, I'm gonna back off and try to start call, cow calling and see if we can bring him in. I get on the other side of the ridge and I'm getting set up and I know about where I think the bull is. But lo and behold, he sneaks around to my left side and basically comes in where my back is turned. And the next thing I know, I'm looking over my shoulder saying, Okay, how can I get turned without him seeing me? Because he came in so incredibly fast. Yeah. 
I thought he was gonna run over myself as well as Jeff, my cameraman. But along the way, when he came running in, he realized we didn't belong there. But fortunately, there was a second bull. Can you believe this? Two bulls running in, I mean, in a fever pitch, trying to get at this cow. Gave me enough time to spin around, get set, draw, and take the shot of a lifetime. You do not understand how hard I've worked for three years to be able to try to close that deal out. At 11 yards, to hear that sound when I turned loose of that era, to hear that back, when you know you've hit something solid and you know that it's done its job. I mean, it's just an incredible rush. It's an incredible relief. <laughs> Can you play that right buddy? down there. <laughs> three years coming. There's it. Was a pretty good culmination to a good good week and actually three you know three years of Jeff hunting with me with the bow and you know finally coming together and you know he just this year he he really just needed to finish the deal with his bow and I'm glad he did. All oh, right. Three years coming, brother. Oh, buddy. Three years coming. Happy for you. I'm happy for us. Everybody here at Wagon Hound, you're great. It's a great facility. Dax, thank you very much. You're best, one of my best friends right now because of all the hunts we've done together. We finally did it, buddy. We finally did it.